Are you sick of using the exact same layouts for every hero section of every website? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you 18 different hero variations that you can steal to start using in your designs today. Let's get into it. Now, the first hero layouts that I want to cover are those that I would classify as all reliable. These are layouts that you're going to see all the time, and there's a reason that you see them all the time. It's because they work in terms of conversion, usability, and the first and probably most common is this classic left-right layout, right? You've got your text and your call to action on the left and the image on the right. A good example of this is this stairs website and you can see especially with a nice graphic on the right side it's really going to bring this basic layout to life. Another thing that you can do is take that image on the right side and stretch it to the height of the viewport and by doing this it's going to create a little bit more of a custom feel and I really like this example by Fino. Now both of these layouts can be flipped and so rather than left right you're going right left meaning you have the image on the left and you have the text and call to action on the right. Now while this is a nice way to shake it up I don't really recommend that you use this too often because typically speaking with most languages we read left to right and that's the way that we look at websites as well and so if you've got the image on the left that's typically going to be the first thing that people look at so unless you've got a really powerful image that conveys your message and your value proposition I wouldn't typically recommend putting your image on the left but there is a good example of this here they still do a good job of calling attention to the text on the right side so in this case I feel like it's kind of working the other thing that you can do is, again, bring that image to the full height of the viewport. And here's another great example of that. All right, so the next one that I want to talk about is one that I would classify as old school. And the reason that I classify this as old school is it's something that you would see years ago, and it makes websites feel outdated. So I wouldn't really recommend this one. But this layout is having the image on the background and then the text as an overlay over the top. Now again, this can be done tastefully, and so I don't want to say you should never use this, but it's really easy to kind of lose track of the text in the image. But one example that I really liked of this is this website, Secret Developers. You can see they've gotten a really nice image on the backdrop, but they still are using some bold text over the front um, to bring your focus to that text. The one thing that I don't like is the call to action is really difficult to see over the image. All right, so now we're gonna talk about centered layouts. I am actually a big fan of centered layouts. Back in college when I was taking design classes, my teachers would say, you should never center line text. It's not tasteful, it doesn't look good. But honestly, I think it's kind of easy to consume and it keeps things looking really nice and, and flow really nicely. And so a few examples of this are just this classic center layout where you've got your text, call to action, and then your image. And oftentimes that image is going to kind of flow out of the bottom of the viewport. But as long as enough of that image or video is showing, it's going to encourage people to scroll to see more. And here's a great example of this um, from this website, Peking. The next one is a slight variation of this centered layout where we're taking the image and bringing it above the call to action. I personally am not a huge fan of this because we want to keep that call to action as one of the main focal points. But there are cases where this can be done tastefully. In this case, Elaster Bank does kind of a cool graphic that comes up and over the call to action. Might be something worth looking into and trying in your designs. The next one that I really like is the center aligned text and call to action with a few images floating around the sides. This is a great example here, Home Hero, where they're actually using um, different like profile pictures of happy people. This kind of conveys their message. Um, I'm a big fan of this. I'm such a big fan of this that I've even used it in my own website, Pate Pro. You can see that we've got a couple of profile pictures with little like text boxes popping up that kind of convey more about our Pate Pro community for web designers. I'm a big fan of this and you can see that I also used a slight variation where the video, our promo video, is showing just a little bit on the bottom of the viewport which is, encourages people to scroll and watch that video. The next ones that I want to talk about are horizontal variations and these are horizontally aligned in terms of the text and call to action. I think this is a really creative way to lay out your hero section. So you can see here we've got the main header to the left, the subheader and the call to action to the right and then the image down below. 
A good example of this is Spline. I actually think they do this pretty tastefully. They've got some cool imagery, um, and they have a great use of hierarchy so you know exactly where to look. You've got the big, bold header. You've got the subtext. You've got a colored call to action. Um, they do this really, really well. The next one is a slight variation of that where you're actually taking the subtext and moving this to the left. I am not a fan of this one because, again, traditionally we're reading left to right, and we don't want people to read the subtext before they read the main text or value proposition. And this kind of goes against basic philosophy of hierarchy because you've got your main header in the middle that's bigger, so that should call people's attention a little bit more. But when they're reading left to right, they're also prone to read the subtext first. I just don't think that this is very user friendly, but it might be something worth trying out. The next one is a huge um, hero image over the top, and then we've got our header and our subheader down below. This is kind of an interesting layout, um, mainly because in the examples that I found, they don't really have a call to action. However, there are occasionally websites where you don't really need a call to action. They're just websites that are built to convey information. And so this might be a layout that you want to use if you have a website like that that doesn't necessarily have a call to action. The next layouts that I want to talk about are those that I classified as quirky. These are ones that I wouldn't necessarily recommend using on an everyday basis, but they might be fun variations to try in some of your designs. The first one utilizes somewhat of a background image where you've got the text that slightly overlays the image and then we've got our subheader down to the bottom right. This is kind of a cool example of that. Now with this, you want to make sure that there's a lot of contrast between the header and the image. And so you're going to have to be really careful with what you choose. I also sometimes see variations where the text overlays, it would invert to the color white. So again, this may not be the easiest to read, but it is kind of a cool way to shake up your hero section. The next example is a slight variation from what we've talked about in some of the past examples, but you've got your header centered up top, you've got an image down below, and then you've got your subheader and the call to action in the bottom right. I kind of like this example because you've got a big fat burger in the bottom left, but you still are utilizing hierarchy and people are going to be able to read kind of left, center to right. So this one actually works pretty well and I kind of like this. The next example is actually one that I'm a big fan of. The only thing you have to be careful of is making sure that this doesn't become too overwhelming, but you've got all of your important info to the left, your text, call to action, you've got an image in the center, and then you've got some additional um, text or even buttons to the right. And I really like this example of trend. You can see that again, you're still going to be reading left to right, big text down to call to action. You've got a really cool image in the center, but then on the right, you actually have buttons that are sliders to change that image. Again, you want to be careful to not overwhelm people with too much in your hero section, but this is a cool variation that I would definitely recommend trying out in your designs. The next example is, again, just a slight change up from the ones we just spoke about, but we've got our text and then our call to action kind of slanting to the right, starting from the center. And then we've got images on the left. Again, you want to be careful using your images on the left just because that's what people are probably going to see first. But there are ways to do this tastefully. It's showing these books on the left, which I actually think in this case it really works because it's showing some of what they're offering. And so I actually like this. And then their call to action in the bottom right is a search bar rather than a button which again, depending on the purpose of your website, can work really well. The next one that I'm actually a huge fan of is this slight centered variation, but instead of having everything centered, you've got your subtext and call to action on a horizontal alignment, and then you've got images to the left and to the right. This website puzzle is a really cool example of this. The images are not necessarily descriptive, but they are on brand and they're really bright and color, colorful and fun. And then I also like that they're calling more attention to the call to action with the little arrow. So this is a really cool variation that I'm definitely going to be using. The next one is a variation that I'm not super thrilled about, but they are somewhat sticking to the whole idea of header to the left and then moving to the right. The only problem is the header is in the bottom left, and then they've got big images right here in the center kind of slanting down. You can see in this example here, the, the reason that this one is working is because those images are 
portraying what it is that they offer or what they do. It's it's their, the UI of their app. But again, this can get a little confusing when people are looking. They're going to start at the top left and then go to the bottom left to read the header. And then they're going to go to the center to see the images and then top right to read the subtext. And then they're going to wonder where the call to action is and they're going to go to the bottom right. And so it can get kind of overwhelming, but it might be something worth trying out. The next variation, this is something that I have really loved and I'm seeing this more often. And this is using a standard layout, but instead of having imagery in a traditional location, like left, right, center, they've got it within the header. And this is a really fun way to express more in the main H1 of your website. And like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. And so if you're trying to say more in the main text of your hero section, this might be the variation for you. And I really liked this example. You can see they've got different images between creative agency for the ocean. I'm obsessed with this layout. It is a little bit more quirky, a little bit more out there. But if you do it in a, a very conservative way, I think it can work really well. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I've got new videos just like this one coming out every single week. Plus, if you're interested in applying for our private community for web designers, where we have monthly trainings, we share resources, and we have monthly design competitions with huge cash prizes, be sure to click the link down below or you can go to paidpro.com to apply. I hope to see you inside and we'll catch you in the next video.